Hello, and welcome back to the Programming in the Knox training series. In this class, we're going to talk about buttons, clickable objects that, when clicked, execute a certain block of code. Now, for purposes of this video, it's important to understand this concept of a trigger. A trigger is that block of code that's executed when a certain state or certain events take place. We're going to learn a lot more about triggers in the next training class, class 113, but what I want you to know right now is that the two button objects, the two clickable objects that we're going to learn about in this class are the only two manually user-activated triggers. All the other triggers are activated automatically by Minox when a current state occurs. Buttons consist of two components, the visual and the programmatic. Let's go ahead and create a button now. Buttons are layout elements, so I'll go to the layout elements palette, select button, size it down using my sizing handle, and drag it into position. Now there are some default button appearances that you can use, blue, red, and neutral. And the benefit of these particular appearance options are that you can change the appearance of the button when it's being hovered versus when it's sitting neutral. I prefer to use a custom design, and I'm going to go ahead and set that design now in terms of my foreground, background, the style of the content, the fact that it's centered, and I'm going to set up a medium sized border to give it a somewhat three-dimensional look. And now we've got our button. The last component in the visual aspect is to name the button or give it a button tag. And I'm just going to go ahead and name this update. This becomes not only the name of the object as appears here in the table definition, and we see our button object right there, but it also is the content that will appear on the face of the button at runtime. So we've dealt with the first aspect of the button, and that is its appearance. And now we're going to deal with the second aspect. What happens when the button is clicked, or the manual trigger is pulled? And I have a block of code that I'm going to use that will update the various months of the year, and we see those fields here. So we now have a trigger that has the appearance we want and executes the function that we want when it's clicked. Let's check it out. I'm going to go ahead and put in a transaction for 500 units sold on July 15th, 2024. When I click this button, I want the correct field, which is the July row, to be updated. And sure enough, when the button is clicked, the volume field is updated, the revenue formula is calculated, and my quantity sold and date sold fields are nulled or cleared out. So now I have a trigger that I can click anytime to activate a specific block of code. Now, as I mentioned, there are two clickable objects available to us in the Ninox environment. Now that we've looked at the button object, let's look at the other clickable object available to us. And it's an object that we've worked with before, and that's the formula. I'm going to go into formula, which will automatically open my formula program palette. It is here that we're going to define the name that appears in this formula once the formula has been turned into a button. Now in this case, I'm going to use an emoji as my name. Remember, buttons must have textual names, but emojis are treated like text. So I'm going to use an emoji to give this button a graphic appearance. I could have done the same thing and used an emoji when I set up the name of the button object. I'm going to do that here. Since this has to be text, I'm going to go ahead and enclosed in double quotation marks. And what I've done 
is copied in an emoji, the magnifying glass emoji, which I copied off of the internet. And here we see it enclosed in double quotes to indicate that it is to be treated as text. Now I have given my button an appearance. I'm going to give it now a name, and I will call this object lookup. I will give it the lowercase b to indicate that it is a button object. What I now want to do is hide the name of the object, B lookup. So I'm going to go to field name position and hide it. And this will give me an object that looks like this. And here we can see now we have an object that appears as a magnifying glass right here on our screen. Clickable objects or buttons or triggers should do something when they're activated, when they're clicked. So let's now complete the second step. Here in the formula definition panel, there is this section right here on click. This allows us to define what should happen when the formula button is clicked at runtime. And what I want to happen is I want the system to open up the vendor record for this particular vendor. So let's go in and open up our formula button palette, go to the on click section, and we're going to use a new function, and that is pop up record. And the record we're going to pop up is going to be the vendor that has been selected in the vendor field. So with this syntax, pop up record with a capital R, we can tell Minox identify the vendor that's been selected in the vendor field, which is just to the left of our magnifying glass, and pop that record up on screen so I can see it. I will save my changes. And now when I click the formula button, sure enough, there's the vendor record for Edison Steel. If I change the vendor, the button will do the same thing. It'll simply pull up a different vendor because a different vendor is here in the vendor field. So what are the advantages of formulas versus buttons? They're both clickable objects and they both have a number of advantages. One of the biggest advantages of the button clickable object is it can be the smallest object on the screen. Here we see that the smallest we can make a formula is two units of screen space. We can make a button object half that big. So when you want to get a button into a very small space, which is really what I want to do here, use the button object because that is your best option for the smallest clickable object. The advantage of the formula button or the formula clickable object is that what appears in the button can vary based on the results of a formula. Let me show you what I mean. Here I have created a formula which controls the appearance of the formula button. And the formula is really quite simple. If the vendor field is not null, then show the magnifying glass. Name this button the magnifying glass icon. If, however, the vendor field is null, which means there's no vendor record to look up, then display nothing at all. This allows me to create a more dynamic user experience in that this magnifying glass is only relevant when there is a vendor selected. If the vendor field is null, then while the object is still there, there's no visual appearance. It effectively changes its name to be a null name. Using the programmability of the name of the formula when it's masquerading as a button allows us to give buttons the ability to change color, change name, change every aspect of their performance when they are clicked based on other environmental considerations. I'm going to define a block of code that says if quantity sold 
equals null or date sold equals null, then false. Do not display the button. If, however, this statement is not correct, that the quantity sold is not blank and the date sold is not blank, then it is true I would like to have the button displayed. Let's see our code in action. Quantity sold, date sold, both null, no button. Put in a quantity sold, still no button. But when I put in the date sold, now the clause, are both of these fields blank, is false. They're not both blank. And when they're not both blank, it's true that I want this button to appear. So we have these two clickable objects, buttons and formulas that have a clickable component. To learn more about triggers, let's go to class 113. I'll see you there. Visit us at www.nioxys.com. Here you can learn about different Ninox solutions. You can get tech support through our Ninox help desk, which is available seven days a week, or you can schedule private one-on-one -on -one concierge sessions for training, or we can help you build your application. And if you haven't done so already, sign up for our free Ninox Learning Lab. We do this every Thursday at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. in the UK, 6 p.m. Central European Time. These free hour-long sessions enable you to learn more about Ninox, features, functions, and solutions. We have open Q&A where you can get answers to all your Ninox questions and you can meet other members of the global Ninox community. We look forward to seeing you there.